How do they match up physically? Well, it's the third time we've seen it. Kelvin Tiller came in fully at the heavyweight maximum, but Jared Rochel is a full-size heavyweight himself. He has a slight leg reach advantage. Kelvin Tiller with the longer arms. Lillian Garcia gets a heavyweight semifinal goal. Fight fans, it is time for the heavyweight semifinals. This is brought to you by Siki. Score the best deals on tickets. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. He is a boxer, standing at six feet tall, weighing in at 266 pounds. In 15 professional bouts, he has a record of 11 victories and four defeats. He is the number four seed, fighting out of Topeka, Kansas. Here is the mama's boy, His opponent fighting out of the right corner. He is a wrestler standing at six foot two, weighing in at 254 pounds. In 26 professional bouts, he has a record of 19 wins and seven defeats. He is the number seven seed fighting out of Sandpoint, Idaho. Here is the big show, Jared Rushall. Your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Big referee for a big boy fight, Mark Smith will control the action here. He's got the referee cam on. If it's necessary for us to go inside of our PFL Smart Cage, we will do so with his help. Kelvin Tiller, the mama's boy in the blue trunks. Jared Rocheltz in the gray. Leg kick, heavy one there for the mama's boy. Rocheltz rushes forward to try and grab a clinch. Tiller shrugs him off and gives him another leg kick. Rochelle desperately seeking that body lock here. So he's got to keep his back off the fence. He was doing a good job, and Rochelle was able to muscle him up and get him there. Now, last season, we saw Jared Rochelle win the semi, the quarterfinal against Kelvin Tiller and then go in against Felipe Lins and Gas. We said when we saw him in the fighter meetings that he looked a bit leaner. So let's see if he's able to push the pace or at least keep his conditioning in check throughout three rounds in this one if it goes that far. He's got that underhook and the position control here. Jared Rochel pressing his opponent against the cage. This is a place we've seen him work and work very successfully in past fights. He goes for the trip, but Tiller is able to turn off. Rochel turns him back around and presses him against the cage one more time. Tiller's got to pummel in and break that grip. He's got to make, got to get Jared Rochel to extend those arms, make that grip harder to hold on to. Rochel dumps Kelvin Tiller to his back as Tiller is warned for grabbing the cage. Rochel lands in side control here. That's that Oklahoma State wrestling right there. Put the big man down. Made him and his brothers wrestled at Oklahoma State. They also fought mixed martial arts. He is a three-time All-American in his college days at Oklahoma State. No small feat. Left hand free. Get ready. Head up. Working up there for the shoulder choke. Rochel trying to step out of the leg control. Working a pass straight to the mouth. He's looking for the head and arm. Tata Katami choke. Squeezing tight for it. We'll see if he'll step off the mouth and go to the opposite side. That is tighty. It's really tight. Tiller doing the right thing. Bridging to get out. Good job by Rochel in recovering position, failing on the submission so he doesn't lose. The spot that he has right now. Tiller's going to have to get busy, look to get to his feet. You don't want to play jiu-jitsu underneath a good, strong wrestler like Jared Rochelle. You want to catch him in transition or catch him on the way down. But don't try to set him up from your back in a half guard position. Tiller closing off his half guard here, trying to keep that leg control. Rochel locked down against Rochel. Rochel trying to isolate the right arm of Kelvin Tiller. Reaches over the head. Here comes an Americana attempt. Tiller should take that right arm and punch that underhook. He's got to buck his hips. He's going to get, unlock that that figure four that he has with his legs. Buck his hips a little and work to get that right arm to hold that in underneath Jared Rochel's left armpit. That lockdown position of Kelvin Tiller's legs is great for controlling the left leg of Jared Rochel, but you've got to use it to compromise his posture. Here, 
Take a look inside, Jared Russell. Oh, Russell. Can't elbow, can't elbow. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good work, good work. Good work. Breathe it while we're working, Kelvin. Good work. Good, now think how, okay, you got it back, you got it back. Get ready to push the leg through. Good, good crucifix. Offense. Good. It's okay, he might. Pleased with what they're seeing. From Jared Rosholt on top. And I want to address that that lockdown that you said. That the lockdown is that the thickest forward position that Kelvin Tiller has on Jared Rosholt's legs. That lockdown is great for isolating the guy on top, but it also just kind of holds him in place on top of you. You have nowhere to go. Tiller trying to grab anything he can to compromise the position of Jared Rosholt, but position is one thing that this heavyweight does best. Smothering away on the mama's boy here in round number one. 45 seconds remain. Yeah, compromising that position would mean changing, reversing it. Jared Rosholt doesn't care where he is as long as he's on top. 30 seconds! Hits, Kelvin. Start moving your hips and bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. Tiller doing a, a fair job of eliminating heavy strikes from the top. Rosholt too busy addressing his own position to try and make something happen from an offensive perspective. The mama's boy pinned to the mat here against Jared Rosholt, the three-time Oklahoma State All-American. Without that underhook, he's not getting up. Go, work to the belt, work. Round two when we return. Round two of right, a heavyweight semifinal. Jared Rosholt and the Great Trunks, Kelvin Tiller, come back into this tournament, this playoff bracket as the lucky loser after Barroso and Nicholson were both unable to continue. Big right hand from Tiller. The mama's boy pokes a jab out there, trying desperately to keep Jared Rosholt off his legs, and he grabs onto the neck. We've seen him finish this before. He's got to fight. Now Jared Rochelle is in on a high single, a high crotch. He's going to lift. Tiller's got to get on his side. We saw this happen in that first bout against one another. Kelvin Tiller was able to grab a surprise guillotine. That time Rochelle's able to escape. This is the third bout between these two men. The first a submission win for Tiller. The second a decision win for Rochelle, who ducks a punch and grabs the body lock again. Once again, dragging Kelvin Tiller to the mat with the inside trip. Tiller has to make an adjustment because if Rochelle can do the same thing over and over again, why change it? The mama's boy was pinned to his back the entire first round, Eve. How does he get out from that position here? What Kelvin Tiller needs to do is take this left arm and punch that underneath this armpit. As he does so, he also needs to take this left leg across the belt of, Kel of Jared Rochelle. That way he can start turning belly down and get himself to his knees and extract himself to a, to a standing position. Referee encouraging more action here on the ground. Relative stalemate. Rochelle tries to grab an Americana. Tiller bucks him, but is unable to get him off. Tiller's got to start working. I mean, these guys are fighting for an opportunity at a million dollars. You have to have put in the road work. You can't be tired right now. Jared Rochelle steps over to the full mount here. He's got Tiller's head pinned up against the cage. Good mount escape, but continue to move. Don't stop by just escaping the mount. Escape to the mount, go to a full guard or a butterfly guard. Just continue to advance position. Once you start it, don't stop. That's not a finish line right there. Halfway through round number two here. It's all Jared Rochelt smothering the mama's boy, Kelvin Tiller. Now Rochelt is looking for Kimura on that far side. He's got the arm straight, but Tiller's straightening it out. That's going to relieve some of the pressure, and he's able to pull it back in. Good job defending. Now let's see him work to escape. And for Rochelle, what I would like to see out of Rochelle is for him to throw more shots from the top, make Kelvin Tiller expose himself. If you can, if you are comfortable in keeping this top position, then try to end, but you can't get to a submission. 
Try to make the fighter under you expose himself. Make him make mistakes by hurting him. This has been a major criticism of Jared Rochelt during his career, that he can get to these positions, but he doesn't advance enough beyond them, and he doesn't get offensive enough once he gets here. We saw him with his first TKO finish in several years in his quarterfinal bout over Muhammad Darius. Can he do the same thing to Kelvin Tiller with 90 seconds remaining here in round number two? Look at how Jared Rochelle has been controlling this fight, though. That's that's his that's his what do you call it? That's his recipe for success. He's just going out there all the time when he gets these takedowns and wants to be on top. We saw him in a bad position earlier, but he's able to turn it around and get to control. That's what Jared. Jared Rochelle likes Central. to do. There's Francis Barroso. He would have been in this semifinal bout had he been medically cleared. He was victorious in his first bout of the evening. He could not continue. You gotta stay healthy in these PFL playoffs. Body shots from the top for Jared Rochelle. Well, Sean, I, I fought it lightweight. So I would have 155, 170 pound guys on you. What's it like to have a heavyweight on top of you like that? There's a lot going on. The referee wants more action. With 30 seconds remaining in round two, he stands it back up. Kelvin Tiller's been carrying that weight that you just mentioned for two rounds now. Does he have enough left in the gas tank to mount some significant offense? There's a big left hand. The mama's boy searching for anything. An uppercut lands. Rochelle once again grabs a clinch. He pushes the Mama's boy against the cage and closes the round that way. Round three next. Welcome back to Mandalay Bay. Heavyweight semifinal. All right, guys, Two rounds round. gone. Work. Fight. Kelvin Tiller in the blue trunks. Jared Rochelle in the gray. A spot in New York City at New Year's Eve and a chance at a million dollars on the line. If you listen to the corner during that commercial break and Kelvin Tiller's corner was telling him, double up on that jab, follow with the right hand on the same side kick. Also, they don't want him throwing that overhand right anymore. They want straight rights and uppercuts. And I agree with all the advice they gave him. That's what Kelvin Tiller needs to do. Good knee by Rochelle. Didn't expect that one. Surprising everybody at the building with a lead knee. And now he pushes Kelvin Tiller to the cage. Tiller's corner also said, you cannot get put on your back again. Tiller reaches up over the head. Rochelle will try and take advantage. He reaps that leg one more time. Tiller spins up and down. Once again, the mama's boy underneath the heavy blanket that is Rochelle, who goes right to the mount. Now he's told he has to do whatever it takes, fight to get out of here. He can't sit on his back and relax. He has to look for openings to get out of here. We see that Rochelle is going to be able to hold his position until it doesn't affect some kind of escape. He goes back to the half guard, figure fours his legs, locks down that right leg of Jared Rochelt, but as you illustrated earlier, Eve, that's not enough. You've got to get your knee in between your body and his. You've got to create some space, grab an underhook, anything. Rochelt getting a little bit busier here in round number three from the top. He wants to stay in this position, and the referee warned both fighters at the beginning of the round that if there was not more action, he'd stand things up soon. And we see Jared Rochelt trying to give us more action, throwing more punches from the top. But look at the position that he's in, inside that half guard with his hips on top of Kelvin Tiller's right thigh. That spot right there is where he wants to be because now he's in control of Kelvin Tiller's hips. See what Tiller just did, he pulled his hips out, now he needs to push, Tiller needs to put his left knee inside that gap. That'll give him more access to, to maneuvering his hips around. But Jared Rochelle recognizes that, he shuts it down. So it's got to push Rochelle's head away to get these positions. There we go. Now Rochelle's got to circle exactly. He goes north-south, then back to side control. Rochelle staying on top halfway through round number three here on ESPN2. Heavyweight semifinal. The winner of this fights for $1 million on New Year's Eve. 
Attila has to work. He has to put these things together in combination. He worked his legs properly, but he wasn't using his arms right. He didn't get to an underhook or push away at the head. You want to either get Jared Rochelle extended to where his head pushes head away so that his chest is not over your body, or get that underhook so you can pull that chest off of your body over your head. That way, Rochelle's hips are not in control of your, of, of Tiller's. Kelvin Tiller, the mama's boy, running out of time. He spent a significant chunk of his evening here on his back, smothered by heavy wrestlers. No answer. That From million Kelvin dollar Tiller. opportunity is walking away. Every second that ticks off of the clock, it's a few dollars walking out of his pocket. 90 seconds left in Tiller's corner to coach him out of this situation. You gotta get up, Kelvin, let's go! We've gotta open that guard and go! Try to work up to that post hand, Calvin. Work up. As soon as he mounts, let's get ready to explode if he mounts. No answer for Kelvin Tiller. One minute remaining in this heavyweight semifinal. Tiller needs to make it uncomfortable for Rochelle. Push the head away. And Rochelle is making it more uncomfortable for Tiller now. Landing bigger shots, throwing punches. Good, but he's looking for a Kimura as he does that. Don't look for the submission. You gotta get back to the open and try to land big shots. You're not gonna be able to submit. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to eat my words. Triangle attempt, but the wrestler's gonna circle. On bar behind it. Oh. able to bail himself out of a last ditch submission attempt by the mama's boy, Kelvin Tiller. Remember, he does have one submission victory over Rochelle from season one of PFL action. Really good attempt. It was a good attempt. Last ditch effort. Ten seconds, Ten seconds remain. I would have liked to see him get back to his feet and try to win this one with bombs, but the submission, he was able to look for one, get real close to it. So Jared Rochelle wrestles his way to a date in New York City. The Oklahoma State All-American moving on to a championship bout. And the mama's boy, Kelvin Tiller, still has his back flat on the mat. We'll have an official decision for you when we return to Mandalay Bay on ESPN2. I'm Sean O'Connell. That's Eve Edwards. That is Jared Rochel, whose three takedowns in this fight were enough for him to completely control a, a heavyweight semifinal and book a spot on New Year's Eve. I think they were. Here's the first one, an outside trip off of the body lock. And this, in this position, he just dominated. He just stayed on top. Now look at Kelvin Till on the outside. He finds a big punch and Jared Rochel is able to slip the punch, gets to his back, and from there, inside trips him to his butt one more time. Until I had no answer from this position. Last one, here's the outside trip this time. Until it's trying to defend, till it goes to the belly, but Matt return right here. That's a big, that's a hard thing to do with the big guy. Jer Jared Rochelle lands a knee from the outside. This is not something we're used to seeing out of Jared Rochelle, but he did a great job tonight. He showed a nice opening, but right here, till his last, last ditch effort, he throws up this triangle choke. He tries really hard to get it, gets very close, switches to the arm bar, till it is almost there. Rochelle feels it, he feels the pressure, he gets his head out, and boom, he's safe now. Good job by Rochelle, great job tonight. He's getting himself to the finals, I believe. Lillian Garcia makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored the bout 30-27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and advancing to the 2019 PFL World Championship, Jerry Rocha! There's a President Day Championship moment. Jared Rochel wins by unanimous decision and grabs a spot in the championship bout on New Year's Eve. Who will his opponent be? Yet to be determined. We know that it'll be a Russian. Before we get to that bout, Caroline has Jared Rochel inside the BFL Sports Team.
Thanks, Jared. Congratulations. You've had a long and successful career, but how does this measure up to everything you've done, getting a chance to fight for a million dollars in the PFL Championship? It's just awesome, because uh, last year I was in the same position and didn't deal with some adversity that came up. And this year, I, there was a lot of switch-ups in the back. And I was like, man, don't let adversity get you again. I came out here and just did what I had to do to win. Your experience really shows through. Let's talk about backstage. You're told you're facing Franz Marbaroso. He won his fight. Then, oh no, it's Alex Nicholson. And then finally, it's Kelvin Tiller, someone you'd fought twice before. It was one on one between the two of you. What's going through your head? Uh, it was a roller coaster, trying to stay calm. You know, uh, I had trained for Muhammad first, and then I was like, okay, it's either Barroso or Nicholson. So I, I kind of had an idea well, for each one of them. They came back, they said, maybe she, maybe uh, Ke Kelvin Tiller. I'm like, oh man, these are wars all over again. I'm like, okay. Well, another war to look forward to. Two other names, right? They're going to face Dennis Goltzov or Ali Isayev. How do you like the look of that matchup? Who do you think comes out on top? I always look forward to a rematch, especially whenever I lose to someone. So I would love to get uh, Dennis again. I think he's an incredible competitor. So, but either way, best of luck to the both of them. Well, congratulations to you, Jared Rushold. Back to you, Sean. Yeah. Get ready. Uh huh. Listen. What you wanna do? If you don't strike first, that's when they gon' come at you. Yeah. And you know it's true. Don't let your life get worse. Being timid, that ain't cool. Nah. No. 